Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do a video all about maternity leave and answer some of the questions that you guys have been giving me about maternity leave, how it works for me here in the US, here in Arizona, and what I'm doing to prepare for it. So hopefully today's video will answer all of your questions and just give you that information that you're looking for because I do have two more weeks of actual work and then I go on maternity leave. I have two more weeks, so I will teach up until the 27th of October, and then I will be off. Um, my first day of leave is October 30th, and my last day of leave is February 10th, so I will return February 12th right in time for Valentine's Day, which I'm really, really excited. I'm glad I planned it this way. I'm a little bummed, though, that I'm missing um, Halloween, but that's okay. So just a little bit of information before I show you guys what I have prepped for my sub. Um, here in Arizona, maternity leave is awful. <laughs> um, I get up to 12 weeks, which is good, but it is all unpaid. I could take one week, I could take two, I could take up to 12. No matter how long I take, it will be unpaid, um, which really sucks. And it almost feels like, oh, the school district doesn't support you having kids and beginning a family, but it's really not true. Um, my insurance covers everything and um, it covers breast pump, it covers, we're paying a $2,600 deductible and after that has been paid, everything is covered. So it's gonna cost us um, $2,600 to have the baby and that's everything. Everything in the hospital is covered, everything else is 100% covered. Hopefully, that's what they've told us. There probably is gonna be a surprise bill somewhere. But um, pretty much everything's covered. Um, like I said, the breast pump is covered for free. And um, I am able to take 12 weeks off without losing my job. So that's really nice. They provide us with a long-term sub. Um, the sub is paid through our salary, which is why we are not paid through the maternity leave. Um, and I was able to choose my sub. I actually did some researching and, and found a wonderful substitute. Um, she's actually a parent of one of the, my students in my classroom. So it makes it really nice because she's invested in the classroom and she's actually a certified teacher. So she knows what she's doing. Um, she's able to plan on her own and it's made things really, really helpful. So that's kind of a little bit about um, my maternity leave and I kind of answered a few of those questions in there. Um, but I'm now I'm gonna show you guys how I prepped and planned for my substitute. So because my sub is a certified teacher and is looking to get back in the teaching game, she has asked that I only plan for her for two weeks. She would like me to give her the standards to teach after those two weeks, but that's it. I've offered to help her grade. I've offered to um, help her plan as needed from home. So I um, might come in every couple of weeks to pick up things that she might need help grading and do them at home and help her with entering grades from home because I can do that. Um, but for the most part, she is taking sole responsibility of being the classroom teacher. So what I've done is I have given her all of my passwords to all of my um, most used resources, plan book being one of them. And I'll show you what I've actually used to give her these passwords. Um, one of them has my passwords on it. The other one does not. So I'll show you this one, but it's just this important password sheet. I got this notebook off of TPT. I just typed in maternity leave binder and this came up and it's been wonderful. But this is just a blank format. The other one in here does have my passwords on it, so I'm not gonna show that to you. But plan book is one of the items that I gave my password to. Now, um, I know that she's been looking at this plan book since I've started planning it to get herself prepared, but I'll just kind of show you what I've done. So within plan book, I have planned basically an entire two weeks worth of lesson plans. They're not scripted, but it is just like a normal sub plan, um, just a little bit more detailed. So these are the standards. Um, uh, we've got an objective, and then we have just a walkthrough of the lesson. And so um, I've done this for all of my subjects for the whole two weeks. Um, I don't have anything here for math because Eureka is done and planned for her, and she does have my teacher's manual, so she has been prepping for that. But everything else is here. Any files that she needs to print or have 
ready for her. Sorry, this is not focusing. Um, are attached here as well so that if for some reason I forgot to print it for her, it is here for her to pull up and that is for all of my lessons. So they are attached there. Um, I also put at the top if there was any like meetings or anything that she needs to attend, which this week she does not. So I have two weeks worth of these types of lessons in plan book. Now you'll see that this second week is less detailed. That's because I didn't include all of the standards because we've already talked about them. And these are more like I've set her up for like a two week writing assignment. I've set her up for like a two week social studies. So she's really not needing as much detail um, because it's like a two week explanation, if that makes sense. So um, after this, I do not have any other plans. Now what I, what I am doing for her is, I gave her my password and login for planbook.com so that she can go online and use it as well. And then I can get on there and kind of look and see what she's planning on doing and give her feedback. So that's really nice. So I'm gonna show you guys the other things that I have ready for her. I have this little basket here next to me that I've been compiling full of things for her. And I've also set my desktop desktop up with all of my most needed and used resources for planning. So she is all set to go. She's got her dojo pulled up. She's got my Google Drive. She has YouTube. She's got my dojo store, my Netflix, my Go Noodle, my Galileo, basically all of the tools that I use at school, they're all there on the desktop ready to go so she can use them whenever she needs them. I do have a binder that I have made for her this cover is just um, a list of things that she wanted me to remember to include. And so I have that here just to remind me so I don't forget. But basically what's in here in this first page is my grading sheet. So it has all the kids' names on it and she can use this to make copies and keep track of grading if she would like. Then I've just got this cover on here. It goes through, it talks about our daily schedule um, and the how it's changed on a Wednesday. So it basically goes through each activity that happens and when it happens. Um, it says 840, pick up the kids outside and it's pretty detailed. Um, and if it's not as detailed, it tells her to go look at the procedures page. So this is a blank one, um, just in case I needed to add more. Then I've got, so this is how I'm planning for her. Um, I have the standard that she'll be teaching for the week um, for reading, writing, language, and science, and math. Math, like I said, is already done, so she doesn't really need to plan that at all. Um, and so what I'll do before I leave in the next two weeks is I'll go through and write down the standard for the rest of these weeks. Now, Andrea, um, my sub, has chosen about eight reading standards, two writing standards, and the language standards because she's very comfortable with them. I told her just choose the standards that you're comfortable with and teach those. I'll cover the rest when I come back. You can just let me know what you haven't covered and I will do the rest. So really this part isn't that necessary because she is comfortable planning on her own, but if she wants to use this, she can. So it goes through November, December, January, and then of course February with my return labeled in there. Um, and it tells her when the breaks are and everything like that. So then um, this year at a glance is also something that I could include some, like teach this standard or this topic in this month. Um, there's nothing in it right now, but like I said, I don't really think that I need to put anything in here. I think this is mostly for her to use. Um, I also have school information. Um, emergency phone numbers. This is all about certain students um, who leave the room. Like I know I have two or three kids that go to speech, so I just have them listed here. It tells her when they go, why they go, and where they're going so that she's not confused as to why they're leaving the room. Um, this is gonna be student transportation information, so for her to keep track of who gets picked up, who takes the bus. We have a really good system here at school, so this probably won't be needed either. Um, student tidbits, I am gonna go through here this weekend and just write some information about students that have a hard time or have some harder, um, higher needs so that she is aware of what they need and what to do in certain situations. Um, this is parent contact information. It's all on the computer, so she won't really need this unless she really, really wants to. And then this one's another one for volunteers. 
And then we get into my behavior plan. And this just basically explains Class Dojo, my scoreboard, our pause, PBIS expectations, and then office referrals and incidents. Um, then we get into our classroom procedures, which everything is listed from attention grabbers to leaving class to lining up inside, lining up outside, bathroom breaks, entering the classroom, leaving the classroom, um, the morning song and the announcements, centers, small groups, pause, behaviors, um, ask three procedures, turning in assignments. It has everything in here. So if she is not aware or she's forgotten or is confused on anything, it's all here in the binder written out so she can reference it. She has been coming in once a week, so she's seen all my procedures and kind of already knows how they go, but this is just a reference. Um, and then I also have a detailed about dismissal. I also have a detailed about fire drills. I have a detail about lockdown drills. This one is about printing Galileo quizzes, so I am going to take this one out and put it, uh, my principal would like has asked me to put it in the workroom for other people. And then of course behind that was my passwords. Then I've got an explanation of my morning duty, an explanation of how specials work um, and what specials are what day. I've got my small groups listed here for their the dates or the times and days that they meet with me. And then there's another page here so that if she wants to change it up, she can move them. Um, centers rotations, this is a picture of the slide that I always project because the centers never change and explains what they do. And then this is just miscellaneous stuff that I printed that I figured I would fill out as needed as I thought about it. This is a grading rubric that our school uses. This is our district calendar. And then back here we have standards for her so that when she's planning, she can use this and she can just pull all the standards out as needed. Then back here, I've got a copy of the nurse passes and yeah, so. That is pretty much everything that's in this binder as of now. Like I said, I have two more weeks, so I do plan on chock fulling this filled with things that she's gonna need. Um, if there's anything else that she is gonna need, sorry, I dropped something. Um, and that will be all set. Then in here, I have some other things for her. So I've got all of my plans, everything that she's gonna need for those plans. So I have the week, Week one of reading, this has all of the resources that she'll need in it. Um, all she needs to do is make copies of them and it's good to go. Uh, and there's little notes that say what to use it for what. Um, she's got weeks one worth of science. Like I said, the masters, I'm not gonna copy for her cause she'll need to get used to doing that on her own. So I just have the masters in here ready to go. And writing as well. Um, it's all in here ready for her to use. And then, of course, week two, because this is how much I've planned for her. Um, everything is, like I said, printed and ready to go. I also have my grade book in here. So this is set up for a brand new quarter. Um, I will be here the first two weeks of the quarter, and then she will take over. So I have all of my stuff glued in and ready to go. This black line is a student that withdrew, but I don't feel like remaking the thing. So all she has to do when she's grading is flip to the subject which is in this top corner, and then record her grades, and it's a lot easier to insert them. Then she's got a calendar of our school events. So this is like all of the um, events that our school has planned, pre-planned, um, when there's no school, when there is a meeting, um, and she will be responsible for attending those meetings since she is assuming all positions are all responsibilities. And then I've got my social studies textbook in here in case she needs it, as well as our science um, resources so that she can just have this in there and she doesn't have to go looking for it. Um, so this is what's in here so far. And then of course the binder goes in here as well. And then anything else that I think she's going to need that I don't want her to have to go searching for, I will put in this tub as well. Um, like, you know, she can keep her Eureka book in here. She can keep, you know, a handbook in here. She can really keep whatever she wants in here. I told her she can have free range of my room and just use whatever she needs, but she feels more comfortable having her own little thing to pull from. So that's that. And 
Like I said, she's been coming in for the past few weeks, once a week to observe. So if you are planning for a long-term sub, I would highly recommend you ask them to come in, maybe buy them lunch, maybe ring them Starbucks, invite them to come in and observe. That way they can see and learn everything that you're doing. That way they can take notes and then when they come in, they can try to do the same things that you're doing. So yeah, that is my maternity leave smorgasbord of love and fun. And um, I, I think I pretty much covered everything that I did or that I'm doing. And if you guys have any questions about maternity leave or the process or anything like that, please, please put them in the comments below and I will be sure to answer those questions. Um, but I feel like I, I got very fortunate to have the sub that I'm having. And if I didn't have this sub, this would have probably been a lot more work. Um, but I am, I feel very blessed. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this helped you with your maternity leave plans and um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.